welcome back everyone for today's video we are going to be taking a look at the game that was played in the first round of the Reykjavik Open being held in the great country of Iceland now the Reykjavik Open is a term that's been around for a very long time I actually played there in the early 2000s I think it was 2003 or 2004 again the years all blend together but nearly 20 years ago when I last played this open event that being said, while the term has been around for a very long time, in recent years it has become much more prominent due to the rise of streaming and many streamers competing in the tournament. So the game that we're going to be taking a look at today is a game played between Galperin Platon from Sweden and Anna Kramling, also from Sweden. Now, Anna Kramling has made a lot of opening videos about a certain opening that she has played, which she has termed with the nickname the cow now this opening has been played a lot even before even before this, all the streaming stuff took off i remember someone i knew was playing it many years ago but it has become one of the meme openings now with it being a meme opening you would not really expect players to play it that frequently but alas we do get that opening so Galperin plays e3 on move one Anna decides to play the move d5 we get the move d3 and now she plays e5 and here we have knight e2 being played now this opening was played by a good friend of mine a national master by, na by the name of Jason Doss a lot many years ago in online chess primarily in crazy house but also in some regular blitz games many players have dabbled with it but it's not an opening that is considered to be particularly good for a couple of reasons first of all black gets to build a big black center here and your development of moving the knights to g and b3 is a little bit slow and you're not really contesting the center at all which violates some of the basic opening principles that being said at the lower levels let's say for example if you take a streamer like tyler one it does not matter whatsoever you can play any opening and you will be able to do just fine so we get knight to f6 now we have the move knight d2 being played we get c6 and now the move knight g3 now it's worth pointing out here that white could also play the move g3 followed by b3 and you could have another one of the somewhat meme openings which of course is known as the hippo or the hippopotamus where white moves both the knights here develops the bishops and i think it's something like the pawns look kind of like the hippo's teeth or the hippo's mouth or something like that again don't ask me about the origins of this specifically but that being said this is another approach so Galperin decides to play knight g3 we get the move h5 here from Anna now this is one of the big drawbacks of trying to develop the knights g3 and b3 here is that black can start pushing the pawns to try and harass the knights now Galperin plays move bishop to e2 and this is already a move that I really don't like I think here white probably should have played h4 but Galperin by going bishop to e2 is forcing Anna to be very aggressive so Anna plays h4 we get the move knight g to f1 and now we have the move bishop d6 being played and now we have h3 now one thing that I've learned from studying a lot with computers in recent times is that the computer engines really like it when you push pawns forward and this is one example where Anna should have pushed the pawn to h3 now of course hard to really be super critical it's a move that looks a little bit awkward because white could go g4 here pawn is guarded by the bishop and the queen and white can also try to redevelop the knight to g3 in a, on a later turn whereas if you leave this pawn in h4 the knight can't ever go back to the g3 square because the pawn covers it so Anna plays Bishop d6 instead we get this move h3 being played and now what Galperin is hoping to do is probably reroute the Knight to h2 and then to either f3 or g4 Anna plays move Bishop e6 we get the move Knight to h2 and here Anna plays a move that probably is a little bit inaccurate which is Queen to d7 now it, this has nothing to do with the actual evaluation of the position but when you look at where Black's pieces are placed you have a big black center pawns on e5 and d5 here you have the bishops on these nice squares d6 and e6 but as you think further down the road when I think about this light square bishop generally speaking it's completely fine here it's targeting this diagonal and when you put the queen on d7 unless you're intending to sack on h3 down the road it doesn't really do a whole lot in terms of helping improve your piece placement whereas in this position black could try to put the queen on e7 here which makes quite a bit more sense for the following reason if white tries to develop this dark square bishop with b3 black can potentially try to trade off the dark square bishops this is number one but also with queen to e7 you might be able to play this move e4 down the road which opens up this nice diagonal for this dark square bishop on d6 and the reason queen e7 makes a little bit more sense here is that if you put the queen on e7 let's say we get a3 and e4 the queen down the road will potentially overprotect this pawn on e4 once you move the light square bishop out of the way so we get queen to d7 instead and now Galperin plays the move pawn to a3 we have the move knight to a6 being played by Anna this is a move that is completely fine but already here it feels like Galperin is going to be able to finish his development and once he gets b3 and bishop b2 and knight f3 it's already starting to turn a little bit 
So, 96 is played. We get B4 here. Now, B3, of course, also completely fine. But Galparin correctly assesses that Anna is probably going to try to castle the king to the queen side. You could castle to the king side, but with a, having pushed the H pawn all the way up the board here, at some point, white can play bishop B2. Let's say you go, like, I don't know, rookie 8, knight to F3. Suddenly, both the pawns on E5 and H4 are under attack, and you can't really guard both of them. So after b4, Anna does decide to castle the king to the queen side, and now Galparin plays bishop b2 here. Down the road, might what white might want to go c4 here and b5 potentially, and already I would say that I prefer white's position. Now, to her credit, Anna does play this move d4 here, which is a, probably the best move in my opinion, even though it's sacrificing a pawn, because what black is struggling with here is how to improve the position. You've you have the big black center, pawns on d5 and e5. You've developed your bishops, you've castled your king. But what comes next? Now, the problem for black here is you would love to play a move like e4, but this actually will be a mistake because after pawn takes pawn, now suddenly your knight on a6 is under attack. Let's say you take here. White can probably just trade and go queen to e2. And after, let's say, king b7 guarding the pawn, white can potentially just castle here, and you have all these issues. You've got the weak pawns on the queen side on a7 and a6, weak pawn on e4 in the center of the board, and pressure on the d-file as well. So, Anna plays d4 here, and now Galpera, much to my surprise, decides to take this pawn on d4. Now, if I were playing as a much lower rated opponent here, the way that Galpera and Platon, who's rated 2555, is playing as Anna, rated 2115, the one thing that you can end up in trouble with is if a game gets very tactical, because tactics are generally very forcing sequences of moves, and when the moves become very obvious, it's a lot easier for a lower rated player. So, for example, if I were playing here, I would have just played e4, and the reason I would have played e4 here is to close the center of the board and now it becomes a lot more about maneuvering there are no obvious ideas for black and it should be easier for the stronger player to play Galparin decides to take on d4 we get pawn takes pawn and now he goes knight h to f3 hitting the pawn on h4 down the road but more importantly attacking this pawn on d4 with both the bishop and the knight now to her credit Anna plays knight to d5 here which is a very nice move with the intention of jumping to f4 with the horse and putting a lot of pressure on the kingside pawns as well as the bishop on e2 so Galparin plays knight takes pawn we get knight to f4 and here Galparin decides to be a hero by castling his king out of the center of the board right into what looks like a very deadly attack now black has a bishop a knight and a queen all aiming towards these pawns on g2 and h3 and it looks very very dangerous now Galparin is assuming that Anna doesn't actually have a good tactic here, and Anna decides to sack the bishop on h3. Now, this is unfortunately the wrong move. What Anna should have played was knight takes pawn, sacking the knight instead of the bishop, because if white takes the knight here after bishop takes h3, you have these very menacing bishops on h3 and d6. You can also go for a rook lift as well to attack the king on g1, and probably after king to h1 and bishop e5 here, knight b3, white is still a little bit better but it's really, really unclear, and there's a lot of play for both sides. Anna instead decides to sack the bishop with bishop takes pawn on h3, trying to be a hero. Unfortunately, as you guys can probably see from the evaluation bar, the sacrifice is simply not correct. Galparin plays pawn takes bishop, and now we get the move knight takes pawn on h3, which effectively loses the game. What Anna probably should have played here was knight takes bishop. You cannot play queen takes h3 trying to checkmate on g2, because then white has bishop to g4, attacking the queen and checking the king at the same time. If you take the bishop, that's a free queen. If you move your king out of the way without a queen on the board, white should win in short order. Anna instead plays knight takes pawn. We get king to h1, and now she sacks the knight on f2, going for the double piece sacrifice. Now, I actually applaud Anna going for the sacrifice because at this point, once she's played bishop takes h3 here, you kind of have to go all in. If you don't go all in here, white will be able to consolidate the position and win. For example, let's say you go king b8. There's bishop to g4, which will win either the bishop not bishop sorry win the knight on h3 or the queen on d7 if you play a move like f5 here white can actually temporarily sack the knight if you take the knight this pin once again will win the game for white and if you do something else like knight g5 let's say bishop g4 knight e6 now white can simply trade the knights and play a move like queen e2 and with an extra bishop on the board black has no attack this pawn on h4 sort of shields any threats on the h file what would bring the rook to the center and white should win the game pretty soon so Anna decides to sack the knight. We get rook takes knight, queen to h3, king g1, and now the move queen g3. Anna here is down two pieces, missing both a knight and a bishop. So at this point, you have to be aggressive and hope that there's something in the position. 
we get rook g2 queen e3 and now galparin repeats once we get king h1 queen h3 king g1 before this move queen to e3 is played here after queen to e3 is played now galparin plays the move whoops galparin plays the move king to f1 so after king to f1 here anna decides to go all in she plays h3 trying to attack this rook on g2 so after g2 in this position we or after h3 sorry attacking the rook on g2 in this position we now have the move bishop to g4 now this is a very very critical move without this bishop g4 move black would actually probably be close to winning the game and the reason for that is after h3 if you were to play rook g1 and h2 again bishop g4 is playable but let's pretend that move does not exist in this position after white plays rook h1 there is now queen to h3 checking the king on f1 and after king to f2 black can go bishop g3 check king e1 by the way would be checkmate here just to point it out and after king f2 bishop g3 white goes king to e3 here and now there's queen h6 checking the king king f3 queen f4 king g2 and queen to f2 would be checkmate as the rook covers the escape square on h3 unfortunately for Anna after h3 there's this move bishop to g4 checking the king in between and this move is very very critical here because now if black goes king b8 and we get rook g1 and h2 after rook to h1 there is no check on h3 anymore as the bishop covers the square so with Anna being down two pieces she throws more fuel on the fire by sacrificing a pawn on f5 with the hope that after bishop f5 and king b8 now there's also potentially an open f file to use for the rooks Galparin goes rook to g1 and now we get this move h2 after h2 is played in this position Galparin plays rook to h1 and unfortunately as you can see from the evaluation bar black is kind of running out of pieces to continue the attack with Anna plays rook to h4 here trying to go for the rook lift and checkmate the white king but now after knight to f3 all hope is effectively lost because now the knights are guarding each other white can bring a bishop back offer a queen trade and you have no way to attack this king it looks like this king is very weak but there are no pieces nearby there's no knight to check on g3 there's no bishop to mate with actually if black were to play bishop g3 which is one idea here white could simply go queen to f3 offering the trade and covering the mate after takes takes white is two extra pieces and will win the game so we get rook h4 knight f3 and now in this position anna plays the move rook to h6 at this point probably it's resignable but again out of inertia and just wanting to, to play on she plays the move rook to h6 and now galparin plays the move bishop to c1 attacking the queen and the rook at the same time after bishop to c1 or wait no, she doesn't play bishop he didn't play bishop c1 sorry he played queen to e1 first after queen d1 queen f4 and bishop c1 sorry different order here anna's queen is basically trapped here you have no squares available now anna could have traded the queens on e1 but with white having two extra pieces any gm will win this game um like it's the first game they've ever played so we got queen f4 and bishop to c1 and now the queen is sadly stuck on this f4 square there's really nowhere to go with the queen anna does play this move queen to g3 now galparin decides to trade the queens on g3 we get takes bishop takes h6 g takes h6 galparin plays king g2 we have rook to g8 being played and after rook to g8 is played we now have the move bishop to e6 rook g6 bishop f7 rook g7 and knight to f5 and I believe here that after knight to f5 Anna Kramling resigns the game against Gal player and Platone rated 25 55. now a very tough game for Anna she's obviously outclassed by over 400 points playing a strong GM from Sweden no big no really big high hopes but what I would say on the bright side about this game is that she did have she did find some good conceptual ideas back in the opening finding this this idea with d4 sacking the pawn and knight d5 knight f4 made some sense obviously earlier she had some chance if she had played for the e4 break because of, at the end of the day that would have opened up a more important diagonal but overall the couple moments she had um some some decisions to make she did find some interesting decisions to try and create complications now it really is a tragedy that she went for the wrong sacrifice on h3 if she'd taken with the knight and the bishop not really clear what would have happened i assume she probably still would have lost the game because of the rating differential but it would have been really exciting to see nonetheless um it was an interesting game i thought it's in one of the meme openings that people are always curious about Anna basically got the big black center but you saw how a GM was able to play slowly eventually outplay their their slightly lower rated player and win the game and I thought that it was fairly instructive so on that note you guys um I hope you've enjoyed this recap from the first round of the Reykjavik Open being held in Iceland I probably will do some recaps on and off obviously I'm quite busy preparing for the Kansas tournament at the moment so you won't get recaps from every round but I thought this was an interesting game it was of course the legendary cow opening and we saw how strong the cow opening can be when it is played by a strong grandmaster. master
So once again, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you've not already subscribed to my channel, make sure that you smash that subscribe button below, and I will be back soon with some more great recaps, videos, everything else here on YouTube. See you guys. Bye.